Infectinator is a series of games developed by Target Production. You might know them from their game Coffee Talk and the game When the Past Was Around that they published. To be honest, I haven't played either of those, but I'm glad that the developer of the Flash game I played back then is still around. The series started with the Infectinator where you must infect a certain number of people in the level and you have to do this for all the levels under 60 seconds. It got popular and so they made Infectinator World Domination. Instead of infecting levels under 60 seconds, you now try to infect the whole world and after this, they made a sequel simply called Infectinator 2, the game that wasted a lot of my time, but it was a time well spent. And then, in 2018, they released Infectinator 3 Apocalypse. There are also spin-off games, Infectinator Hot Chase and Infectinator Survivors, but for now, I will talk about Infectinator World Domination. It's a flash game, so you can play it at flashpoint. The goal of the game is that you have to destroy the whole world using a zombie virus. Aside from the zombies, you can also use different special infected to help you on your attacks. You can attack different countries and cities. Some levels have heroes that have a much higher health and have different abilities to combat your zombies. First, let's talk about graphics. Mostly, it looks okay. The people and the zombies look simple enough because you will mostly see them running, getting infected and dying. It does the job just fine. The gore is also simple, but if you are in a large map with a ton of people, then you will paint the entire level red. However, the map design is really bad. It looks like an RPG Maker game because it's literally the RPG Maker map asset. The graphics clash with the symbol pixelated people the level design is very bland. Most of the time, it's just an empty building with some obstacles, like trees or rocks, and sometimes the wall doesn't even have any collisions at all. I get that it's going for that simple look, but if the design complements the level and the overall graphics, then it would be better good thing that this is fixed in the later sequels. Now on to the music and sounds. Since this is a pixel game, the soundtrack is of course chiptune music. It's not that good, but it's not bad either. Nothing really stands out for me. Other than I guess, the infection music and the lab music. My only real complaint is that the songs are very compressed. But I think that's already given since this is a flash game. Next, the sound effect mixing. It's really bad. It's one of those sounds that sounds okay when there are a small number of people. But by god, if you start infecting a large number of people, 
the screams will turn into a typical multiplayer lobby. Oh, the screams just keep piling on, and whatever the hell the sound is. If done better, it would sound great. The screams and the gunshots makes the chaos you are seeing much more enjoyable to watch. But sadly, if you are in the end game and at a big level, then prepare your ears. Gameplay You can spread your virus by just clicking, and a bullet will spawn in four directions or eight. If you purchase the upgrade, and if it hits someone, then they will turn into a zombie, with the exception of the secret agent, most of them will get infected. If you bought the wall and the people piercing upgrade, then finding a bunch of people that are grouped together and releasing the virus on them is a great strategy to spread the infection more. Especially infecting American people, because when they die, they will fire a virus in four directions. Your starting zombies will be bad. They would be slow as a snail, fragile like glass, and have a lifespan of a medieval child. So basically, they are like old people, but if you upgrade them enough, then, you can destroy a level with just the zombies. If you position your virus effectively, even with just one zombie, it can cascade into a massacre. It's very satisfying to watch. It's like a chemical reaction, but with more deafening screams and blood. Now that I think about it, it is like a certain chemical reaction. As for the zombie upgrades, it's very straightforward, so I won't talk about it. There are several zombies that you can obtain by killing heroes, with the exception of one. They of course have higher stats than your zombies, and have different abilities that can help you with your infection. You can only spawn them once per level. All of them are powerful, with I guess, one exception. First, you have the Neverland branch owner himself, Michael Jackson. When you spawn him, the game pauses, and the music will change while he dances. His specialty is that he spawns with a bunch of zombies. He is good when flanking a bunch of people to be infected, and that's pretty much his gimmick. Second is the tank. You can unlock him by killing a Rambo. It will be a hard battle since at this stage your zombies are weak. But once you kill him, it will be a walk in the park. If you encounter heroes in the future, he is big and beefy. His specialty is high damage. The tank is primarily used for taking down group soldiers and heroes. Third, is the Boomer Santa. Unlocking the Boomer is weird. He can be found in Greenland, the last location you can unlock. By that time, you already have a good zombie setup. So, in the end, you won't really have to use the Boomer that much. Since your zombies can already carry you. And if Greenland is your last country to destroy, then you won't have much time to use it. I think if you can unlock the boomer in the mid game, then it would be used more. The boomer's specialty is infecting people. He can vomit to infect them, and when he dies, he releases a virus. He is used effectively on a group of susceptible people. Fourth is the chicken king himself, Colonel Sanders. He can be unlocked by killing him on Kentucky. His specialty is raising dead chicken. The chicken can overwhelm and infect people. And if they die, 
the kernel can just summon more chickens. He is best used when targeting a large number of soldiers. Fifth is Mr. Ronald. To be honest, I think his specialty is shit. Literally, because Mr. Ronald shits out burgers. If there are people nearby, they will eat the burger, and then they will get infected. Which is really situational. Mr. Ronald takes time to shit out the burgers. At that state, he is very defenseless, and the people are already running away from him. And why do you want a burger trap that needs the victim to walk to it? Instead of just a zombie that can run up to the victim. Plus, most of the time, the zombies are spawn killing the people at the sides of the map. So the burgers that Mr. Ronald made in the center of the map are useless. I don't really know how to make him a better special zombie. His gimmick is very situational. Most zombies can do what he can much better, which is to infect people. And lastly, the sixth special zombie, Venom. He is very hard to unlock, because Spider-Man, the hero you need to kill to unlock Venom, can incapacitate zombies. That includes special zombies. So, you can't just use a tank. You have to swarm him with common zombies first. Then, use a tank, and the flicky, the tank can put his damage down, and kill Spider-Man. Venom's specialty is incapacitating people. He is effectively used against heroes, and in conjunction with the tank, the Venom can trap the hero, and the tank can safely damage the hero without any resistance. You can upgrade their special abilities, and that's pretty much it for the zombies. As for the money, the game is quite generous, with the achievements giving money. And if you really want to get as much money as possible in a level, then I recommend targeting soldiers, since they drop more money. Now on to the levels. The levels are a bit randomized. For example, when entering a level, there is a chance that the people will be all soldiers, which can be really hard to infect. Or if lucky, you can have a level full of large people, making the initial spread more devastating. So it can be a dice roll when entering a level, if it's a good start or not. After you finish a level, a news report will talk about the attack. She will tell the statistics of the attack, like the number of people killed, the number of infected, the number of money you earned, and more. I really like this addition. It can deliver the statistics of your attack in a charming and creative way without being too complicated. You can unlock the other cities in a continent by killing a certain number of people in the level. And if you want to unlock the other places, you need to destroy a certain number of cities. And to destroy a city, you need to kill off everyone in that city, and after that you can't attack that city anymore. I mean, it makes sense that you can't attack it anymore, since it's dead already. And if you destroyed all the cities on the continent, then if you look at the map, it's dead grey. Everyone is dead. I don't know why, but I like this. It's like a reminder of this continent is dead because of you. Now move on to the next one. It makes you want to destroy more of the world and bring it to the end. Speaking of the end, I don't know, but after I destroyed the last city, it just doesn't end. No game over or a windscreen. Just nothing. And since there are no more cities to attack. I'm just like, 
in this dead gray world. In conclusion, I think that it's a fun game if you can get past some of the problems. If you like this kind of game or have the urge to end the world, then I would recommend playing it. The playtime is just one and a half hours. And for the problems, some are fixed in the later installments. And oh my, I really want to cover the sequel. But that will be a review for another day. And with that, that's all for today. If there is any flash game you want me to cover, just comment below. And if you are new, hello, I'm a VTuber that makes documentaries and reviews games. So if you are into that kind of content, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching, and see ya!